Favorite 11 time with Bert Cockley. 11 questions, cricket and non-cricket. You ready to rock and roll, Bert? Let's do it. Your favorite roommate on any cricket tour? Steve Smith. And why Steve Smith? He just offers a lot. <laughs> he offers a lot. <laughs> Your favorite way to spend a 14-hour flight to or from Australia? Binge watch movies. Your favorite Australian sports moment in your lifetime? The Newcastle Knights winning the 97 grand final. Underdogs. Your favorite cricket ground experience that you've had as a player or as a fan? I always say new, uh, the SCG um, just because of its historical. But I loved, I'm going to give you a couple if that's okay. The SCG because of its this historical presence Adelaide Oval for the lunches and it's old as well like the Sydney Creek ground and then the MCG was just overall like it's just massive like you go to the MCG and you bowl and the ball just like crack and it just echoes through the stadium and it's huge and then you go back to the Sydney Creek ground and you're like this looks like a great ground <laughs> it's a baby your favorite cricketer of all time Brettley why Brettley just fast, fast, aggressive. Just love everything about that. The intensity of the run-up, the aggressiveness, bowling fast. I love it. I think I know where you're going to go with this one, but I'll ask it anyway. Your favorite non-cricket athlete of all time? Paul Harrigan. No, that's, it's funny that not many people would hear about him. You know, we typically go Muhammad Ali, and but there's something about, about him that I still, he's a blue-collar you know, from the country, made it as a professional rugby league player, just everything he stood for as a human being. He was a good person. He, he was all about teammates and mateship and he led the team. And I, those traits I just love. I love that in a sportsman. He, for me, just was the epitome. Your favorite place to eat out on tour away from home? I miss this from Australia. is going to a good coffee shop and getting a good coffee and banana bread. Here, you just go to Starbucks and you get crappy coffee. I miss going to down to Coogee Beach and there's a couple of really good coffee coffee shops and we just go get a coffee and a banana bread. I miss that. <laughs> Your favorite beverage of any kind? Espresso. 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 How do you take your espresso, Bert? Well, I put a little bit of milk in this one, but it's I basically have like three shots of coffee every, every day, two cups. I have one for first when I get up. A few more hours later, like some on my second one now. Yeah, strong dash of milk. Your favorite pizza topping? Pineapple. Just pineapple, not the ham and pineapple, just the pineapple. Well, as an ingredient, I always go for like a meat lover's pizza and a barbecue sauce and pineapple. But the pineapple is what makes it? The sweetness. I've got a sweet tooth. <laughs> Your favorite movie of all time? Shawshank Redemption. Hope can kill a man, Bert, especially in U.S. cricket. Hope is a dangerous, <laughs> hope is a dangerous thing, Bert. I like that. It's good. <laughs> Your favorite show to binge watch, whether it's on Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Paramount Plus, any other streaming service or a DVD box set, what's your go-to when you've got a lot of time to kill? I love documentaries. I'm actually like a – I love history – like World War One, Two, you know the Roman conquests. The I love all that history through you know a thousand years ago or Napoleon and documentaries on that stuff. So I'll, if I if we ever do a road trip, I will listen to podcasts on like history. That'll be like a three or four hour podcast, and I just like zone out. And so I love that stuff more so than TV shows. Fascinating. Is there any one particular subject within that sphere of war history, World War One, World War Two history, Roman history that really uh, is a favorite of yours? Well, Rome in particular is fascinating. This civilization that emerged and then and then just basically just not disappeared but fell apart. So that whole conquering and of the world to me is amazing. They just you know, obviously it's not a great thing, but just 
those conquests they went on and also then like Genghis Khan, you know, through, through Mongolia and, you know, going into China and then going through, going West, just that whole thing, you know, thousand years ago on, on a horseback just is amazing. Like I just, I love trying to put myself in those shoes of those people in that time. And like, even like, even now with Ukraine, like here we are, like I'm middle of America, things are pretty good. The existence of some people in the country, like Ukraine, you know, they're fighting for their, you know, fighting for their country right now. And just if you go back a thousand years, that's what it was like. Any country it was, you could be getting conquered at any time. So we live in a pretty good time. So I always like to, you know, think about the, how things were in the past and how good we how good we have it today, and we're pretty lucky. So for me, it's just like a bit of a reality check and um, just how good it is.